Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to Indie E3. Um, oh, you got the mumble over there. Perfect. So I have about 40 minutes to give you as many games as I can while also giving them the respect and space that they each deserve. Uh, that's kind of been the theme of the Indie Showcase, and I've really liked it. I like how it works. Um, so I'm going to jump right into it. You don't need to hear from me. Uh, the first two things that we have, they're a little different from our normal side of things. Um, we have Joe Badiah, who has been in chat for all week and hopefully is there now. Um, Joe Badiah wants to talk about um, his, he's been working on some Twine projects and uh, he has some videos that are a little too long for uh, what we're, uh, the time that we have right now, but we can also give you links to all of those in the chat because they're on the public document. Um, and that I would recommend that you watch the whole videos because uh, he's got some great thoughts on, on his videos. Uh, but you don't have to take my word for it. There they are. Uh, my name is Jody Dia Holmes, and I'm here to talk about my game Vigil, which I made and released recently. So it all started with Hoborg. No, it all started with a tweet by Finney on Twitter, whose Twitter handle will be here using YouTube magic. Hmm, cool stuff. So, they said that they made an experimental twine game, and I'm like, wow, I'm all about experiments, and I'm all about twine, so let me check this out immediately. I replied within seconds, and then I opened it within minutes. And I quickly realized that this was probably not what I was expecting. It was a series of read these things and reply to them, and then delete what you replied to. So it's just your thing made out of this prompt-like twine game. thing. So I did that and when I first started out I was just looking at the prompts as I was going. I didn't read them all to start out with. So the first couple I'm like, wow, this is fun. I get to talk about, you know, death and ghost things. And so I totally made two characters for the game. And then after a couple more prompts, I quickly realized that this was not supposed to be about characters. It was supposed to be about me as an actual person and what I would do in this scenario. So then I continued to roll with the characters, but I inserted a lot of my life and my experiences into them. And so they became a lot more genuine, but there's still a kind of just like an isolated aspect of myself, which is interesting. Well, one of the characters is myself. The other character is somebody close to me. And so the game follows this interaction as I die and then enter the afterlife and then look through the entire life that I've lived and then learn something and then come back into my body as a not dead thing. That's a short description of Vigil, as well as where Vigil came came from, and some of the ideas that were brought into uh, building it. It's it's a twine game that you can access right now, and hopefully there has been links in the chat for it. Um, but uh, I've got another video from Joe Badiah about a completely different twine project that is unreleased um, and is a work in progress. And so I want to hear uh, some of the thoughts that he has about uh, another game called Cyclops. You having certain gates in certain states. And so, yeah, you delve deeper into each gate, which represents a part of myself. Body is the physical and the past. Um, Joe Dadaya is my creative self. Zenith is my child innocence inner fantasized action hero. 
Oakenfold is cold and calculating, and demon is all of my lack of self-esteem and depression and suicidal thoughts. So you pick a gate to explore, and you get to learn about one-fifth of me. And once you finish all five of the gates, you have an extra key, and you get to leave, and you get to talk to that voice again, and you get to give them their key back, and you thank them for them lending you a key, and you bid farewell, and that's the game. So currently, all I have is body. Um, I'm still not finished with body, I'm working on it, so the way each gate is going to work is that they're all going to have a distinct feel. Um, so in addition to a slightly different color palette, which you can see if you download the, uh, the zip file about the work in progress, um, I should have that in the description YouTube section. So there's a zip file. Everything has a different color scheme, but there needs to be more that separates the gates besides just what it's about and what it physically looks like to you as a player. And so the way I'm handling it is that each gate will have a different tone to it. So if you open up body, it feels like you're opening up a filing cabinet. Like it's just a list of scars and of physical attributes and of tales from the past and it's all very informative and lifeless and then the other gates Joe to die I want it to feel like a conversation with me breaking the fourth wall a bit but you get to you know I like to call myself and I like to be called Joe to die so when you open the gate titled Joe to die it should be like you're opening a door and finding me within it. There you go. There's the mic. Uh, I love, I love, love, love what Jodadai is talking about within the, how he's kind of formulating these ideas on the fly based in Twine. And we've talked about Twine just a couple of times over the course of Indie 3. Um, and what it kind of evokes through the platform itself is a lot of speculation about form and the different ways form can manifest itself uh, within creative forces and thoughts because uh, we've talked about how it's like a, a sticky note board where you can like post your ideas and then link them together um, but you are creating like physical artifacts that have forces that loop between them and move between them and it's very flexible how those forces interact um, and so it's very it's completely reasonable that all of these uh, kinds of ideas formulate themselves around Twine, that a lot of Twine games are very personal and very metaphysical and um, kind of do these things because that's what the platform is like. That's what it's like to build things in Twine. I've also made things in Twine that, uh, when I was building them, had these kinds of same things. So Jodadai, I really, really appreciate and love these videos um, and want to make sure that they are put together or they are spread out on... Uh, on the in the chat room so that people can watch the full length videos because uh, that was only like small snippets of a much larger work as well as all of those games and prototypes are attached to those videos um, but it's just it's really really cool um, so I'm on to another game and this is uh, just a website a website for a very light fun silly game uh, by John Thayer and Anna Alino it's called John and Anna are having a dance party you want to hit me, James? Thank you. This is John, and this is Anna, and they're going to have a dance party. And it's about how they love each other a whole lot. Here are some screenshots. Notice that this was just released June 8th, 2014, and it has controls. So you can download this right now. And this is from SocksMakePeopleSexy.net. Um, but it's just a fun, light, silly... A uh, game about, uh, made very, very plainly, but also with tons and tons of texture and uh, different objects all over it. And it's about having a dance party. Um, this is just, uh, this is so much, so, so different from a lot of our other 
uh, Indie 3 Fair, but I could also say that for every single Indie 3 submission. And so <laughs> I'm just like looking at these screenshots, I'm like, there's so much going on here. And it looks so fun and playful. Um, this is so beautiful in a lot of ways, uh, while also being personal and uh, playful and lighthearted. And it just looks like it's such a good time. Uh, I want you to go and download it and go play it. And you can do that. There uh, is so much going on. And most importantly, the big flashing text at the top, it basically compels and commands you, uh, as well as the, the background of... Uh, Gosh, I just am enjoying this site so much. I'm soaking it all in. Uh, but go download that for Windows. John and Anna have are going to have a dance party. And it's pretty fun, I guess. I wonder if that's technically... I think it's just called Dance Party, but I kind of like the full working title. And it's pretty fun, I guess. Uh, so our next game, this is uh, Dave the Devourer. Let me have a video to show you. Oh, let me grab the music for you guys. There you are. You must be Dave. Ooh, that's coming out very soon. That's coming out on Tuesday. That was Dave the Devourer. And so that's on PC. Um, I just have... I, I love what's going on with uh, Blasted Beacon putting this together. Uh, I'm trying to see more information about... How? Uh, and, and from whom? Uh, there's a team... Okay. Yeah, that's uh yeah, that's Casey Pryor, the lone developer of Blasted Beacon. Um and the things that they that Pryor has made here, I think are really really amazing. Uh for a one-man person pulling putting together an entire game uh that is now coming out in only a week is uh really amazing. And there's a playable demo. Even though it's incomplete, I mean, it's there. It exists. There was a trailer and the trailer looks amazing. I actually really loved how they uh, captured all of their the different pieces of the game in a very kind of Hollywood-esque trailer, while also uh, kind of just in the style of epic game trailers. 
uh, little bits of drama and dramatic storytelling, little bits of a uh, person playing in a game world, um, and just how they managed to kind of handcraft this game engine that looks all its own and looks entirely uh, original, unlike anything that I've seen before, at least in aesthetic, in, uh, sorry, in the graphics and in the ways that everything moves and plays. Uh, it's just very cool. Uh, and it's cool that I've, I haven't seen anything quite like it, uh, at least in the way that it presents itself. Um, and it, it still it sticks close to those kind of uh, standard adventure tropes of like a Legend of Zelda, and I think that that's really cool. Uh, I think that that's a really cool thing. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say with Dave the Devourer is that uh, Blasted Beacon has, in as a single person, accomplished uh, a whole lot by developing their own engine and developing an engine to create something uh, alike, likened to a big adventure game, a big epic adventure game. And that's saying something. That's something really cool. So I want to just congrats to them on making it the distance and being able to put out a game. Um, and also, you can go find Dave the Devourer uh, at BlastedBeacon.com. And I highly, highly recommend it because it looks so cool. And had really cool music, too, on top of everything else. Um, oh, uh, sorry. I wanted to also mention the uh, storyline and how you are the spirit uh, walking through all these places, and uh, I'm just absolutely impressed with how that comes about um, and how your body transforms in these cool, radical ways. And it's just like, I'm just Dave. I'm just, I just devour stuff. Uh, it's cool how that's represented in the colorful cast of characters that are there. Uh, just like all of the pieces are there, and I think that that's, that's the most amazing part. Um, so yeah, that's Blasted Beacon's Dave the Devourer. Uh, next up, we have Nandanyanan. The first sutra, Imagine Japan trailer. This is a uh, Nandinyan, the first sutra. Hanan Janai Tenguman, Game Da. Thank you. 
That was the first Sutra by Chagata Games. Uh, I was so impressed with that trailer. You have uh, this huge Japanese mythology that they're drawing from uh, to create this bullet hell shooter. Um, and there's so many little, just tiny details to it. This is such a subtle, uh, subtle piece that uh, the trailer just did a fantastic job showing uh, all these little nuances, um, all of the forces that are involved uh, with where the bullets come from and down to how they look, how enemies are destroyed. Uh, they all have their own uh, spirit and their own energy to it. Um, and you are interacting with that energy by uh, trying to dissipate it or destroy it or manipulate it in some way, as you could see. Um, you could create an aura around you that sent bullets back at the uh, back to where they came from. Um, and so like all of these things actually work really well within uh, ideas of spirituality, um, especially down to the very bit where um, the idea of this bullet hell is that you are your spirituality and that spirituality is only manifested in this little tiny uh, pinpoint within your body. Uh, the rest of the body, you can have bullets firing all around you, but you die if it hits that little tiny circle in the middle. Uh, I don't know if that was clear with the with the trailer, but that was definitely something that I noticed with uh, how it was going. And that, like, that's so cool. Uh, it just kind of overlapped so well. Um, so that was that was Chigata's, Chigata Games' is The First Sutra. And uh, I think, let's see, we got to find a place that you can pick that up. Um, oh, that was made for the Imagine Japan exhibition at the MEN in Neuchâtel, Switzerland. Um, so you can go to men.ch to find more information about it. Um, oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, so that's uh, facebook.com backslash Chagata Games to find more information. And it looks like this is uh, very, very recent that this came out. And so uh, it's still in development, it looks like. Uh, but so cool. So cool. Uh, thank you guys for submitting this. Thank you to Chagata Games. And it's so inspired and so cool, and what an interesting place to be coming out of, too. Uh, so we have even more. We have more... Uh, I think this is actually... Yeah, this is, might be uh, somehow related. Uh, more Japanese-inspired games. So this is Exogenesis. It doesn't matter which path I have to take. I will save my sister. I'm the only girl in your life. Right, you? Let's all get along, alright? The only thing that won't lie to you is science. Use your damn head. Hear me? Why don't you die already? Let's see some anarchy. trailer for exogenesis how exciting how epic in scale and scope why you gotta always fridge the ladies you don't need to put them in the fridge uh but no that's uh exogenesis and uh that is made by uh it is going to be an adventure and visual novel inspired by zero escape and ace attorney games so we're gonna be doing some mystery solving and we're gonna find out some uh how all of this Ooh, uh, spooky, ghosty stuff's working. Um, also, as I think the coolest part of the trailer was actually the subtle bits in the first couple of frames where you could see uh, this post-apocalyptic world that the trailer was set in um, and how there was all of these large structures that were 
uh, grown over. And so you had the roller coaster just covered in uh, moss and grass and wildlife. And it was, uh, it was a really cool scene, a really evocative scene. Um, and there's just so many cool things going on there. Um, they also, I believe they have a Kickstarter that has just been funded. Yeah, just a couple of weeks ago. Check it out. Hit me up, James. That's so cool. They managed to get their uh, Kickstarter funded. Um, oh, right. I remember. I got Exogenesis from, uh, I don't know if Shinxie Paps is in the chat, but Shinxie Paps, Paps has been in the chat and been hanging out um, and is one of the voice actors in the game. And so that's where they're coming from. That's where this game came from, was actually directly from the voice actor of the game. Um and so Exogenesis is uh, a thing that will be in creation currently, um, and that trailer is only one bit of it. And so it's going to be exciting to see what, uh, what the creators make with it from here. So thank you guys. Thank you for submitting that. It's really, really cool. Uh, where are we at for time? We are currently at 5.47. And I believe that we are scheduled for the Indie Game Riots podcast at 6. Perfect. This is the perfect time, then, to start getting into... We have five different submissions from uh, one artist that got through, and it's called... Uh, the artist's name is Stellar Null, and um, the first one is Kotak. I think it's just a playable game, so... Oh, hey, Armor Games! Nice to see Armor Games around. Uh, always publishing them cool indie stuff. Um, oh, there's Stellar Knoll's website. <laughs> oh, and they're the makers of, of Kotak. Oh, you know what? I've actually, I've played this game. This is a stacking game. Okay, I'm gonna just show you guys this uh, really quick. It is a, a simple puzzle game. And since we're doing, we have five whole different games going on. Um, I want to let's see if I can get through these. Oh, I can't jump ahead. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't want to spend too long playing this game, but this game is so cool. Um, basically, you just stack up all of the layers and then land on the star. Oh, I didn't land on the star. of levels to it and does a lot of really really cool stuff uh which we don't have time for within the showcase of the indie showcase uh in the spectrum of the indie showcase but uh that's kotek and kotek is really really cool and you can play it right now uh also from stellar knoll though we have a teaser video of the game outsmart That was outsmart. And if you didn't miss, if you missed that tagline, it said, "All your money are belong to us." <laughs> and I love life simulator games. Uh, they're just so much fun, and there's always so many uh, fun characters. The last one I played was uh, Cherry Tree High Comedy Club, and all of these games are usually much uh, smaller in scale and don't get a lot of attention. But they're so light and fun and happy, and they usually don't take very long. Uh, but that's the teaser video for Outsmart. Um, and, uh, 
So to be more specific, you play as Annette, a an obsessive girl who's a friend of a girlfriend of Rob Me, a boy in a mess, reach the goal by doing various actions and playing fun mini games. And so they have official site, and I believe that that's something that might be already out if I just click through the site real quick. The music's so fun, happy. Okay, so this is just a, this has been recently updated. No, this is a long, long time ago. Excuse me while I look at the actual year. Um, <laughs> so it's an old game by Stellar Knoll. That's so cool. We've got a wide variety of uh, things. That's how they've, they've got so many games. Uh, the next one is Pixel 2. And so that we'll see if this is another completely different game or what this is. that James I did did you see that I did they're it saying was... in the chat that this is the pixel 2 here is the newest game from stellar null oh okay cool and that it is a timing avoider survival game I know rhythm game it's got music in it figured you'd dig that yep uh that was so cool Ah, it's another completely different game. That's so cool that Stellar Knowles made so many different things within their their group. The the group of games is just so variety uh intense. And so if that's that must be their if that's their newest one, um we have <laughs> that video was published uh twenty thirteen. And so um I'm trying to see there must be uh oh yeah, pixel two dot stellar dash zero dot com. Um, cool, 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 and they have a they have soundtracks that come with it, and so many awesome things. Go play Pixel. Uh, go play. What is it? Yeah, it is Pixel. I just realized that what I was reading is actually a word that sounds different. Uh, P I X L E, two. Uh, go go play that. Um. Oh, was that? I thought there were more. I definitely remember seeing more. Uh, let me make just double check this real quick. Yes, okay, yes, there are more. Uh, cool. We also have, oh, this is uh, art and stuff for uh, Stellar Arms, I think was what it was called. And this is at the, uh, yeah, Stellar Arms, and this is from TigSource. So at the TigSource forums, they have uh, information on Stellar Arms which is cool that you get to see some of that, uh, some of the places where developers are developing their games. Is this is this Gunstar Heroes? Because I, I love Gunstar Heroes. I love Gunstar Heroes. This too. this looks, this looks fantastic. <laughs> oh, the animations are so cool. This this GIF actually shows so much in such a small space. You know what? Just always advertise your games with GIFs, because now we can actually just put this in chat and have it run. And none the wiser. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, so there's also a lot more stuff going on. We have some sprites, some concept art, some run animations. And uh, it's a retro-styled run gun, how they, how they call it. 
You play as Soul, who, weird, who wields the Sun Parasol that works as a flamethrower. And you're fighting a horde of water drop minions. That is so cool. And so fun. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Look at this guy. Uh, so I have more, more zero null as well. There's even more. This is uh, sort of August, Road to Independence, and here's the trailer for it. that I'm seeing between all of these stellar null games and uh, how you can you can see from game to game that they're not so there's not so much worried about uh, the form that the game takes as much as uh, they're about expressing flows and uh, how those uh, structures are used to um, kind of create this feeling or this this feeling of play and uh, it especially shows in sort of August because they're like, all right, we're doing this top-down shooter thing. And then uh, all of a sudden you're like going into overdrive and like there's uh, excess amounts of information going on. It's not like you're just going to, into overdrive, but it's also like, we're going into overdrive! Uh, just like over-the-top kinds of reactions. Um, and they work to, to such great effect. And it looks so, uh, like, it's so well-executed uh, to make uh, kind of like almost a, an intense epic anime style of uh, within all of the games, within all of them. They've all kind of had that same kind of feeling, um, even even when it's like a life sim that's just super like down to earth and reserved, uh, but it's still like very peppy and excited and ready to get going. It's just like it, it all is so representative, uh, that kind of like epicness of playfulness and frivolity. Um and so we've got one, 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 one more. Nope, nope, nope. No? It is time for Indie Games Riot. <gasps> Have I ran out of time? Do we have a minute? We ha We are 12 seconds over. <sighs> Next time. Next time. Next time. Same then. bat time, same bat channel. All right. Well, then after the panel, we will reconvene and do uh, talk more. And uh, I thank you guys for watching today's Indie Showcases. Um, Thank you. All Get right. Out of here. We will take a short intermission while we prepare for the Indie Game Riot podcast. Thank you. <laughs>